How's it going guys? Chris from Terrestrial Imaging here and in this video we're going to be going over the Anzu Raptor T. So the Anzu Raptor T is a new drone to hit the market recently and as you guys can tell it looks very similar to some of the other drones that are already out there on the market. In this video though we're going to be going over what makes the Anzu Raptor T unique compared to those other drones that we're already familiar with. All right guys, so over here on the left, I have the Anzu Raptor T, and then over here on the right, we have the Mavic 3 Thermal. So these two setups are nearly identical, except the main difference between the two is you'll see that the foam inserts for the Anzu Raptor T are actually oriented in a different position than in the Mavic 3 Thermal case. We still do have on the Anzu Raptor T all the storage space that you're familiar with in the Mavic 3 Enterprise box. So everything Thing from a storage, um, I guess, perspective is still going to be identical. All right, guys, so here are the two controllers that we have. Both are pretty much the same, except the main difference is going to be actually in the antenna. So they are a little bit of a different shape, but are going to give us the exact same experience. If we look at the controller too, the main difference is just going to be some different coloring, um, but everything else is going to be pretty much exactly the same. All right, guys, so laid out on the table, I have the two drones side by side, and this is really just to give you guys a look at the differences between the two, which are pretty minor. So the Anzu Raptor T is obviously green where the Mavic 3 Thermal is going to be gray. We have some different coloring on the propeller tips and in different locations as well. So again, for all um, pretty much intents and purposes, these two drones on the outside are more or less identical aside from their cosmetic differences. All right guys, so now that we've seen the two drones side by side, what really sets them apart? So with the Anzu Raptor series, the key takeaways are that the Anzu Raptor series is owned by an American company and the flight software is written by Aloft. So Aloft is a reputable American company and some of you guys might have already used them in the past to get your uh, Lance approvals or other waivers done through the FAA. Now with the Anzu Raptor series as well, another key thing is there is going to be no geofencing restrictions. So the pros and cons to that are is on you to understand the airspace that you're flying in. But on the other hand, it means that the drone will never be the limiting factor as to why you can't take off in particular airspaces. All right guys, so this is what you will see when you boot up the Anzu Raptor or Raptor T. You're gonna be brought into a Loft's flight software. From this screen, you'll be able to just see the home point of the drone, any missions that you currently have approved, or any Lance request that you might want to submit. So you'll have to add your phone number and then you'll go through the process of submitting a Lance request just like you would on a Loft's website. To get into actually flying, you'll hit start pre-flight on the bottom right. We'll wait for that to boot up and then we'll just hit start a new mission. From here, there's a pre-flight checklist that they want you to go through and check all the dots, but you can just go ahead and hit skip. Same thing for this page. And then once you're into the app, this is what you will see on the camera view. So everything here is gonna be quite comparable to the Mavic 3 Enterprise series. Things should be placed in a familiar position. So from here to start the drone, just like your Mavic 3 drone, you're going to pull both sticks down and towards the center. Your propellers will start and you'll be able to take off your drone. With our drone in the air to switch to our zoom and thermal payload, you're going to be using the buttons on the left hand side of the screen. So we'll look at our zoom camera first. And this is going to be the same 56 times zoom that you should expect to see on the Mavic 3 Enterprise series. From here, if we wanted to switch to IR, we can go ahead and switch to our thermal camera. We can change our color palettes as we see fit. We can also do side by side, calibrate our thermal view, so on and so forth. So everything that you are used to seeing with your Mavic 3 Enterprise series, you should find with this Aloft flight software. So to look at our map, it's gonna be the same thing as the Mavic 3. We'll look on the bottom left, click our map, and we can zoom out. And now you should see what you're used to seeing on Aloft's website. So here we're gonna see all of the restricted zones, all airports, and every location where you would want to have a Lance request in order to fly. So Aloft software integrates the Lance request process in the flight software to make things really easy for you. 
All right, so there's really not too much to cover here between the Enzu Raptor and the Mavic 3 Enterprise in terms of what we're seeing here on the screen right now. Everything that you should expect from your manual flight will be present in this app. The main difference lies in the fact that the Anzu software, or rather the Aloft software, currently as of right now does not support autonomous mission creation. With future releases around the corner, you should then see those autonomous missions present. So with the Aloft software, there are gonna be some things that are missing. Like for instance, right now we're on our thermal view. So if I were to switch it to like the iron red palette, if I were to click anywhere on the screen, we're not getting temperature readings like we're used to with the Mavic 3 series. We also can't create a box on the screen in order to get a highest and lowest temperature in a particular area. So hopefully these features come out soon. I know that Aloft is releasing, you know, updated notes to let us know what features are coming down the pipeline. But hopefully these things are added soon. All right, so as you saw from the app, you know, everything is really there to do your manual flight. In time, I'm hoping that all of this autonomous mission stuff does come out sooner rather than later. A lot of us are using the autonomous features when we're doing mapping, and that's really the main key. So with manual flight, again, everything that we need is really there. So with our specs, right, they're gonna be comparable to the Mavic 3 thermal series. So we're gonna have that 640 by 512 thermal imaging sensor. We're gonna have that 56 times zoom sensor. And then we're also going to have that wide angle sensor as well, just as we would expect from that Mavic 3 thermal. All right, guys, so that wraps up our video on the Anzu Raptor series. But before we go, I just wanna highlight a couple things before we head out. So with this being an American product, it means that it's going to be a perfect option for those of you who aren't able to use DJI. But because it is an American product, expect the prices to be a little bit higher than what you might be used to. With this product, the software is also written by Aloft, as we've covered in this video, which means you can also get Lance approvals directly done in the app to save you some time. This drone will also not have any geo zones built in, which means the drone will never be the limiting factor as to why you cannot launch during your mission. So for any other questions you guys have on the Anzu Raptor series, feel free to reach out to us at 1-800-359-0530, leave a comment down below, or find us at our website, terrestrialimaging.com. Thanks for watching.